Amendment 9. Amendment 9, we were told when it was being brought up on July, 27, July 21st, it was brought up on the 22nd, but we got a statement on it uh, a couple of days earlier. And uh, we were told it's about nationalization. A lot of Belizeans are into this nationalization fever. Yes, let's nationalize. Well, it's another story. When the amendment came to the House, and I was in the House when the amendment was read by the PM, the first thing it dealt with wasn't nationalization, but clarifying how we can change our Constitution. First clarification has to do with Section 2. What does it say? Page 3 of the Constitution. This Constitution is the supreme law of Belize. And if any other law is inconsistent with this Constitution, that other law shall, to the extent of its inconsistency, be void. Any other law you create that goes against it, to the extent of its inconsistency. You create a law that has five steps to it, five different, uh, we would say, five different clauses. If clause three is bad, you throw out clause three. One, two, four, and five is still good. That's what that means. To clarify that, they wrote. First, they changed this and renumbered it. So now we have a set, subsection two, number two. The words other law, when it says any other law, that's inconsistent. Occurring in subsection one above does not include a law to alter any of the provisions of this constitution, which is passed by the National Assembly in conformity with section 69. So if we use section 69, which means... I am the PM. What I say goes. Everybody agrees? We don't have to talk to anybody about it. We write it up. We did the procedure right. We waited 90 days. We had a, we had a hearing. We went out if we wanted to and consulted with people. They said A, B, C, D, F, G. We don't care. Because guess what? The consultations in Belize, if you're listening to them, if you look, it's a total farce. It's a joke. The Constitution does not require as the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law does require for them to do consultations. But nowhere is it written what they do after the consultations. See, if they go out there and they take a vote, and everybody that goes, there's 80 people, and 75 says we don't want it, and 5 says we do, they don't have to record it anywhere. It's not recorded. I know because I was at, a, at one of them. It's not recorded. It's all a farce. So after that, they passed the law. So what they're saying is, the words any other law occurring in subsection 1 above does not include a law to amend the Constitution when it's passed in conformity with section 69 uh, passed by the National Assembly. So if we pass a new law that says, remember, remember you're protected, your, your rights are protected, your freedoms are protected, and the fact that you have a land that's protected. But if they pass a law that says, uh, guess what? We, any land above 10 acres now belongs to the government. That's taking away your rights, your land. But no. And that would be in contravention or in, that will not be consistent because they're now taking away your land, which is your private property. But they're saying, no, if we pass it, it's now a part of the Constitution. And the Constitution cannot be illegal, basically, against itself. So, nice, nice pretty argument when you have a real democracy. But not when you have dictatorship. When you have dictatorship... That's, that is what you call a situation, dangerous situation waiting to happen. If they can pass any law they want. Belizeans abroad, they can pass a law that says we no longer need dual citizenship. They can pass a law that says if you don't live in the country, any property you have in Belize is now, now belongs to the government. They can pass a law that says the prime minister is prime minister for life. They can pass any law they want. And what can you do about it? It will pass in conformity with section 69. The Prime Minister passed it. And that's it. So, they didn't stop there. They amended Section 69, or tried to anyway. And this is the caveat, and there's a lot to this, but I don't have the time. Section 69, listen to this, folks. For the removal of doubts, it is hereby declared that the provisions of this section are all inclusive and exhaustive, and there is no other limitation 
whether substantive or procedural, no limitation, on the power of the National Assembly to alter this Constitution and the law passed by the National Assembly to alter any of the provisions of this Constitution which is passed in conformity with this section, 69, listen to this, shall not be open to challenge in any court of law on any ground whatsoever. Now, either somebody was smoking the green stuff that they did not understand what this is, but I'm telling you, even the local Belizean, they're not smoking the green stuff. They're understanding this. Many Belizeans are now getting it. And they're realizing that what this thing is saying is exactly what it says. They can pass any law. And as long as they got the three-fourths majority, and a simple majority, and they waited 90 days, they can pass it. And no court on any ground can challenge it. So if they say anything they want and write it into law, you have no choice but to accept it. Because under our current constitution, it is still a slavery mentality constitution. The people have no power and they have no voice. That's why I'm saying Let's therefore change this and give the power to the people. Then they got into the utilities side. Utilities are what? In the U.S., gas, water, electric, right? Telephone, right? In Belize, we don't have gas, natural gas, so it's water, electric, and phone. So when they did this, the amendment... Nine is to verify and guarantee and force the government of Belize to always own a 51% majority stake in light, water, and telephone. They will take over the companies that they don't have control of, at least minimum 51% of them. Now, the nationalized people, nationalized Nationalization fever is strong, and so people are happy. I'm not, because I know it's a game. Because for one year, the, the Belize government has had BTL. Belize is one of the few countries that you cannot use Skype. You cannot use voice over IP. I'm an IT professor. I'm a part of the ICT task force for the country of Belize. And I challenge them all the time. And I'm telling you right now, folks, one year, it belonged to the government. No, the price of Digicel did not go down. The price of telephone did not go down under that one year. So Belizeans, what do they think? They think that light is going to go down? They think that water is going to be cheaper? Or whatever? No, man. It's a farce. It's a game. If they want to nationalize something, then maybe they should consider nationalize what we really own. Because we, we didn't create the telephone lines. We didn't create, God didn't give us the uh, systems that are there. But God gave us the natural oil that we have, though, didn't he? Isn't that ours? And the gold that they are taking out, we have gold, by the way. There, we mine gold in Belize. That belongs to our country, our people. You know, the sugarcane farmers working pretty tough, pretty hard. They wanted the government to help to sign off so they can buy the rest of the sugar factory. The government didn't support them. Now, that's natural stuff that I would think even if you want to be, you know, nationalize something, nationalize that. But that's another story. Let me tell you what they did. We agree that their public utility in Belize is light, water, and electric. Well, we have a very smart, someone, you know, well, let me say this. I, I think we have a very intelligent, um, uh, very intelligent leadership in our country that know exactly what they're doing. Anybody that don't pay attention to what they're doing will be fooled. So you got to pay attention to them. They added a paragraph, D. It says, any other entity 
designated as a public utility provider for the purpose, purposes of this part, by a resolution passed by the National Assembly, right? In that behalf, also falls under this. So what they're saying, this is our catch-22. If we decide now that um, media is now considered a public utility, how do they get the, 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 that to be passed in the National Assembly? Simple. The PM has the majority, whoever the PM is at the time. He says, we want from effective today all media houses, we must own a 51% interest in all media houses. Do we have an eye? Eye. The eyes have it. That's it. They now own 51% of Love, Channel 5, Channel 7, Krem, and everybody else. Simple. They say from now on, we consider that uh, the internet cafes and whatever, they're all a part of public utility. Do we get an eye? Eye. The eyes have it. They now belong to the government. Would you invest in a country like that? Maybe uh, unless you're in another world. But to wrap it all up, because my time is out, basically, folks, the way I see it, 21 September 2011, we have our 30th year anniversary. In Egypt, 30 years was the reign of Mubarak as a dictator, controlling a nation, pressuring a nation. The young people of that nation decided we will not take this anymore. And they went and sat out and said we will not leave this center until the president leaves. He tried many things. The guys did not fire a shot. They didn't believe in approaching the government and shooting at them or firing any weapons at them. They believe in doing it peacefully. And they were able to, in 18 days, remove a 30-year dictator. Our country is not a democracy. We've never been a democracy. We have been a tyrannical dictatorship for 30 years, cloaked in the robe of democracy. This constitution of Belize does not give the people the power to change many things in our nation not even to speak at a change in our constitution. Our people don't have a voice. I call on you, Belizean diaspora, Belizeans abroad, to help us change this. 21 September, 30th year and 30th year anniversary of Belize, an independent nation. 21 October, we could therefore be the birth of a new nation, Venezuela. Welcome to a clone of Venezuela, because that is where we're headed. If you look up on the internet and you search, you look into nationalization, you will find the first searches, Venezuela. And you will find that Hugo Chavez stepped into the house and told them that he wanted executive power. They gave it to him. The Ninth Amendment is executive power given to the Prime Minister of Belize to pass anything he wants. Thank God, to this point, many parts of this amendment have been scratched out. We don't know how it'll end up, but that's where it's at. I challenge you to not let our country become Belizuela. Keep it Belize, but give it a democracy. Give our people a voice. Let the people get the power. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless Belize.